Now before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. Hey there, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I will share 10 very important settings that you need to change or tweak on your Samsung Galaxy S10. These settings will help you secure your phone, boost its performance, and also help with time management. So let's dive in and discover right away. If you're wondering what case I'm using for my Samsung Galaxy S10, see the link in the description box down below. This is an official Samsung case, and it's a fantastic case. So check the links below and now let's move on. So the very first thing I want to talk about has to do with security and privacy on your lock screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the display. So let me just tap on lock and I'm just going to double tap on the screen just to preview what's going on on my lock screen. And as you can see, all my notifications are fully and completely exposed. Anybody can go in there and get all the information. And just to give you one example, here's the messages that I just received and somebody sent me a PIN number, which is myself, but I'm just doing this for demonstration. But somebody sent me a PIN number here and now that is fully exposed, even as my phone is supposed to be locked, as you can see. So let's go inside and rectify that so your messages or any other not notifications are never exposed on your lock screen. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the settings, all right? And then you wanna go into the lock screen and then just scroll down and go into actual notifications. You tap on that. And from here, there's a couple ways you can customize the actual lock screen as, as far as it pertains to notifications. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to enable the hide content information. Now, when you do that, as you can see, when the content is enabled, you see everything. You see the app, you see the message, you see the time, you see everything. When you hide the content, all you see is the app and the time, you do not see what actually happened. So again, if I lock my phone right now, and if I double tap on the screen, as you can see, I can pull this down, but I'm not gonna see any information. I cannot tap on the arrow to expand any notification, okay? So that's what you wanna have. So that's one thing we just took care of, but I do wanna make sure that you're able to fully customize that area as well. So let's go back into that same setting screen, and I wanna show you one more thing. If you do wanna show your content, all right, what you can do is you can actually do things like icons only. You can do briefing only. So that's a briefer message. Now, if you go to the icons and if you have this uh, disabled and if you lock the screen, what you'll see this time is you'll see icons. But again, if you pull it down, it is going to expose it. So what you want to make sure is under all circumstances, this high content is in fact enabled. And with this one, you can just customize it the way you want to see whatever that you get, okay? So this is the way I like it, but also I don't like these white bubbly rounded corners over here, these notifications. So what I like to do is I like to just go like this and that's going to make it more transparent. And if you go like this, just to, so you can see it a little bit, you'll see that it'll be more transparent. So you can actually see the background of your um, uh, lock screen if you, if you have to. So I like to see everything. So this is better, okay? And the final thing I'm gonna show you guys is uh, the best thing I think is just to go like this, tap on that and choose icons only. And then when you lock the screen, you double tap it. And now you just see the icons on the top. You cannot get access them at all. Okay. But you do know that you have notifications. So you log in and you check them manually. Okay. All right. So that's the notifications. Let's move on to the next tactic. The next very important setting that you need to be aware of is to actually back up your smartphone. Now, when you go to the settings, and if you go into accounts and backup, uh, over here you have a backup and restore option. Okay, so you can backup and restore from here. So if I click on this, you have two things going on here. On the top, you have the backup and restore for your Samsung account. And on the bottom, you have backup and restore for your Google account, which is gonna be linked to your Gmail account. So make sure you come in here, you set them both up, okay? And do a backup on each to make sure that you do not lose your data in case something happens to your phone. Maybe you have to reset it. If you had backed up the Samsung account and the Google account, it's basically going to restore everything, including the way your home screen is set up and all the apps that you have downloaded and all the contacts and all the messages and all the call logs, everything's gonna be backed up. Now, let me quickly show you, uh, make sure this is backed up too, okay? Just in case 
it's never a bad idea to have multiple backup backups in multiple locations. But with this one over here, if I tap on backup data, you'll see that it gives you so many options to backup just about everything on your phone. Now, every person that has a Samsung account gets 15 gigabytes of cloud storage for free. So when you come here, uh, in my case, I have 5.9 gigs available right now. But as you can see, I can back up the phone, messages, contacts, calendar, clock, settings, uh, Bixby, home screen, apps, documents, and music. So everything over here is going to be backed up just by tapping this backup button. So let's say something did happen to your phone and everything got erased or you did a reset and you lost data. All you do is you come back to this setting, tap on restore data, and simply pick the one that you want to restore from this list here. You can pick any phone that you want and then just click restore. And your phone, if this was my phone, right, right over here, all this stuff, before I lost my data, after I restore, this is the exact same thing I'm going to see, including the wallpapers and the lock screen settings and all my other settings. So it is essential that you uh, set this up. Again, this is for security, safety, and remember, make sure you back it up for both accounts, all right? Now, the next thing I'm going to be talking about has to do with your digital well-being. So if you go to the settings, there's an option here that says uh, digital well-being right over here. So basically, this allows you to control your how much time you are wasting on your smartphone. So we do a lot of useful things on our smartphones, but also we do a lot of wasteful things on our smartphones that do waste a lot of time. Now, when you look at this, you get a snapshot over here. Uh, it, it says that I use my phone for three hours and 56 minutes today. A blue curve over here that says the VLC player was the most used item. So that's a video player and I've been watching a movie on it. So now it's, I can see how much of it I used per day. So in a day, I was spending a lot of time on the VLC movie player. Now, if you click on this, it gives you more details. So Amazon and VLC. So here, as you can see, VLC was used today for one hours and 59 minutes, which is a lot. So what I could do is I can actually set a timer so I don't spend too much time on VLC and be aware of how much time I'm wasting. So what I can do is I can tap on this and just say 30 minutes, or let's just do one hour. I already did one hour and 59 minutes today. So I set a one hour timer. Now if I were to go to VLC player right now and try to watch another movie right over here, uh, where is that? Right here. First of all, as you can see, it's grayed out. And if I click on it, it's gonna give me a message saying, VLC timer ran out. You've used all your time for VLC today. You can change this in the settings. So all I can do right now is I'm like, wow, you know, I did waste a lot of time on this, so let me just skip it for today. So you can just click okay and move on with my life. You can do the same thing with Facebook, Messenger, uh, Messages, YouTube, and all that good stuff. So again, if I go back here, and if I look at the YouTube application, as you can see, I used YouTube for eight minutes. And if I were to add a timer, I can do a custom timer, and I can just pick, like, let's just say five minutes for today. So I'm already over the five minute mark. So when I go to the actual apps, and if I go over to YouTube, which should be somewhere here in Google, it is grayed out, and if I tap on it, it's not gonna allow me to launch it. I just click OK and move on. It's just something that is gonna help you to waste less time with apps and games that might be designed for uh, media consumption and social media consumption. And again, uh, you can do this for any app, uh, especially for social media apps and also media consumption apps. All right, so let's move on to the next tactic. All right, the next setting you need to enable is a very crucial security setting that a lot of people simply forget about, simply don't even think about. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go to the settings and then go into lock screen over here and then go into secure lock settings. You tap on it and then it's going to ask you to put your regular pin number in. So let's do that right now. And then once you do that on the top, there's two options you need to enable immediately. And that one is lock automatically and lock instantly with power key. Now log automatically, if you tap on it, by default is at five for 15 seconds, all right? And that shouldn't be the case, it should be at immediately. So if it was at 15 seconds, just to give you an example, and if the screen turns off, the phone doesn't actually lock for 15 seconds. So you wanna make sure it locks immediately as soon as the screen timeouts and turns off. And the other thing is, when you press your power button, Again, the screen doesn't lock right away. It actually is active for a couple seconds. So take a look at this. So 
Right now I have a pin number, I have fingerprints enabled, but when I turn off my phone, right now it's supposed to be locked. Let's say I walk away, somebody came right in, double tap my phone, goes right inside. The phone is not locked, they've got full access to my smartphone, and that's not good. So wanna, you want to make sure that you enable this option here, lock instantly with power key. Now when I lock my phone, and if I double tap it, it's going to go into the actual lock screen like it's supposed to, and then I can use my fingerprint to log right in. So make sure these two are properly enabled. This has to be immediately, and this has to be off. All right, let's move on. Now, if you're outside, and if you actually lose your phone, uh, it's gone, okay? You, you just lost $1,000. So what you want to make sure is you, you enable the Find My Mobile feature. So you do want to go to the Biometrics and Security, and then you want to scroll down to Find My Mobile, tap on it, and make sure this is enabled. You do have to have a Samsung account that is linked to this option, and then you want to enable Remote Controls and Google Location Services. So let's say I went out there and I lost this phone. I came back home and boom, I'm in shock. It's gone. So what I can do is I can go to this website, findmymobile.samsung.com, uh, log in with my Samsung account, and then remotely control and locate the exact location of the smartphone. Now, it is very possible somebody stole the phone and they turn it off. So what you want to do is you want to actually send the last location before the uh, phone gets turned off. So if somebody did grab your phone and they turn it off, right before they turn it off, the phone is going to send the last known location to the Find My Mobile website over here. And you do have this option here as well. Uh, I don't recommend doing this, but you can do it. This is a remote unlock feature. If you enable this, your PIN uh, and your password will be stored on Samsung servers, but then you can use those to remotely unlock your smartphone and even control the phone uh, when it's out there and you do not know where it's at. I don't think it's a very necessary feature, but again, it is an option there. It's a reason. It's an option. You can enable it if you are comfortable, but I think this this and this is going to fully protect you in case you lose your smartphone. Nobody wants to lose their smartphones. So make sure this option is enabled, all right? And as you can see, I have logged into findmymobile.samsung.com and I'm able to actually access a control panel that gives me all this crazy functionality. I can rig my phone, lock my phone, track the location, erase the data, backup, and so much more. So you want to go to your PC or your Mac and just log in to findmymobile.samsung.com and this is what you get to track your phone. Now the other couple of things I want to talk about has to do with optimizing your smartphone so it runs at maximum performance at all times. So what you want to do is you want to scroll down and go into device care, tap on it, and then in device care, uh, as you can see in the middle here, uh, you have the optimize button. I, I just performed an optimization on my phone by tapping the button here. So right now it's at excellent condition. Now this is something you can do manually or you can actually do this automatically. So what you want to do is you want to tap on the buttons over here and then go into auto optimization. You tap on that and basically you just enable this and make sure that you pick a time when you're asleep so this task runs automatically in the background while you're asleep so when you wake up, your phone is fully optimized and ready to go for the day. And of course, that's the first thing you should do. The next thing you should do is again, tap on this button and go into the auto restart. So it is essential to restart Android smartphones at least once a week, again, for optimum performance. Now this option here automates that process. So you enable this and you can actually pick seven days of the week. So you can restart your phone every single day at least once. I recommend picking up two days, uh, such as Monday and Thursday, okay, so Monday and Thursday are active, and then just pick a time, again, when you're asleep or when you think it's comfortable for you to have your phone restart. You do not want to be in the middle of a phone conversation when this happens. So I picked 3 a.m. and I click done, so every Monday and Thursday at 3 a.m., the phone is going to auto restart again, guaranteeing optimum performance, all right? So make sure you enable those two options. Now, one more quick thing I wanna show you guys is when you tap on the recents button at the bottom here, you see uh, four apps that you probably use all the time. So these are recently used apps or most used apps that show at the bottom for your convenience. So every time you tap this, boom, 
uh, these apps, and I know that I use them all the time, so they're showing up right here. Uh, you can disable this if you don't want to see them, all right? Because you got your apps right here, so when you tap this, maybe you do not want to see the apps or accidentally tap on them. So go to the settings right here, and then go into uh, suggested apps, just disable that. Now when I go back out, those apps are disappeared, and even the cards are now centered on the screen. So look at that. Boom, all right? Just one setting to get rid of if you don't need it. Another very important setting has to do with your password. So if I go to any website over here, let's just say Hulu, and I go to login, and I type in my password. Every time I type in my password, you can see the letters show up in that password box right there. So if I type in F, you'll see that F. If I type in G, you'll see that G, okay? So if somebody's looking at the password field, they can see exactly what you're typing and might even memorize the password that you have. It's a little bit harder to look at the keyboard because your fingers are on it, but that box here is fully exposed. So when you're typing, as you can see, you're seeing all the little letters here. Uh, somebody might get a clue as to what your password might be. So you can disable that option. Just go to the settings right here. Uh, scroll down to biometrics and security. Go all the way down, tap on other security settings, and make sure make passwords visible is disabled. All right. Now when I go back out there to that website, let me just erase this password and type. It's not going to give any previews. It's not also. It's also not giving the previews on the on the keyboard. Normally when you press the keyboard, it shows the bigger letter on the top, but now you're much more safer. All right, so that's security option that needs to be enabled. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.